Okay, so this is a thought that I've had on my mind for quite a while now, and I've actually tried to make a video for this several times before. I think this is probably the sixth or seventh attempt at uh, trying to put this into words, and I never could quite get it just right. The words never came out quite the way I wanted it to, uh, so I'm just going to try again, and I, I think I've got a better way of saying what it is I want to say. But uh, one thing I've noticed over the past, you know, couple months that I've been developing my channel is, uh, maybe I shouldn't even start there. Uh, so when I started my channel, uh, it was primarily just to post things that I thought were cool. And some of that was Let's Play, some of that was map making, some of it was computers. It was the computer thing that really caught on, and that's also the one that I was most passionate about, so that's the one I went with. But, uh, as I went along, people started requesting tutorials. Now, from my... I, I kind of attacked the tutorials from the same way that I attacked the computers. And it wasn't that I just wanted to create a computer so that I have something cool to show off. It was because I was genuinely interested in how computers worked. I wanted to know uh, exactly what was going on inside those circuits and how software was creating images on a screen and how operating systems worked and how networked work uh, networks worked and so uh, I figured and maybe this is a bad assumption but I like to assume this anyway is that anybody who is requesting a tutorial and watching my videos was probably also interested in learning how to uh, create their own computers as well how to uh, create working models that they could use to explore concepts such as operating systems and out-of-order operation and pipelining and stuff like that. Uh, so I created tutorials from the perspective of understanding the fundamental concepts and arming yourselves with the tools needed to design your own computers. The problem is I'm getting questions on my channel that indicate that people aren't interested in actually learning, they're more interested in building their own computer for the sake of building their own computer just so that they can go to friends and family and say look at what cool thing that I just built and really I can't say that there's anything wrong with that it's not something I agree with but if that's something that you want to do uh, more power to you I guess the problem is I'm not going to cater to that if you're wanting to build a computer for the sake of showing it off to friends and all you want to do is copy a tutorial, then I would recommend going to some other channel. Because there are plenty of other people out there who will gladly make a tutorial showing you block for block how to build their computer design, and you're more than welcome to follow them. My only uh, advice against that would be, if that's what you're going to do, you're not really going to learn too terribly much. Now, again, if all you're interested in is building your own computer, or all you're interested in is, is just building a computer for its own sake, that's fine, but if you're actually interested in learning how to build your own computer and how to design these things and how they actually work, you're probably going to have to stick with my channel. Uh, because what I'm doing is I'm starting with the concepts. And um, I guess I didn't make that entirely clear when I started making my tutorial. I probably should do that. So I'm not showing you how to build your own computer. I am breaking down the concepts behind a computer in as small and easy to digest pieces as possible while still giving them to you fast enough to keep you from getting bored. Because that was the one issue that I was having with a lot of the tutorials is they they went into so much detail that the videos just went on and on and on and you eventually got bored and gave up. And then there were other videos that were short, but they were so deep into layers of abstraction that you had no idea what was going on. So my tutorial was sort of a balance. I went just enough into the detail where you had a clear understanding of what was going on, but not so much that it dragged on. And I feel like I have achieved that with my tutorial so far. And my hopes is that by the end of this fourth video that's coming up here, uh, that we will cover pretty much all the basic concepts of a computer. And the idea is that, and this is more like a hope, I really hope that this is the case, but by the time I'm done with those four videos, eventually, hopefully fairly soon after, 
I want to release another video titled how to build your own computer. Now, I'm sure a lot of people would, will be excited for this. They're probably thinking uh, that's what we wanted from the, from the beginning. Let me just stomp out any excitement here. No, this is, it won't be a tutorial for how to build my computer. Because again, I want to teach you guys how to build your own computer. Uh, again, for the sake of giving you the tools necessary to experiment and learn what works and what doesn't work. So the, uh, the, the next tutorial to come out, how to design your own computer, would probably be more along the lines of building off of the concepts that I introduced to you over the first four videos and showing you how to think differently. Because really that's essentially what I'm trying to go for, is getting you guys to think differently. And uh, this ties into a point that I wanted to make. Uh, I get a lot of comments asking, you know, how do I connect RAM to the ALU when RAM only has one output and the ALU only has or has two? Or how do I connect I/O because you know I/O and RAM are two different things? And all these questions of how do I do this and how do I do that and looking for the answer. So I have a problem with that because it seems that the modern education system has kind of programmed us to look for the right answer, and looking for the right answer is. It's not bad, depending on which context you're in. So if you're a factory worker and you need to follow a schedule, or if you're a troubleshooter shooting technician and you need to find a part, uh, if you're in any of those fields like that, you need to know how to find the right answer and you need to know how to find the right answer fast. But this is more related to the world of design engineering. There are no right answers. So I people come to me, they, they expect a right answer, and I go, I can't give it to you because there isn't one. I, there's no definitive answer that I can give you. The only thing that you can do is find it yourself. And while I can't give you the answer, I can at least give you the tools you need to find the answer. And so that's why I'm kind of working on videos that go into more concepts. And so the video that I want to make, how to build your own computer, uh, would essentially be the bridged uh, the bridge to bridge the gap between knowing the concepts and actually translating it into physical circuits. I do not want to show you how to build a computer. I want to show you how you can build your own computer, how you can start with the intention of what I want my computer to do and how you can translate it to a schematic drawing and how to translate that into a physical circuit because really this stuff is easy. This stuff is ridiculously easy. There are four basic components that you work with in building computers. You you have your decoders, you have your encoders, you have your registers, and you have some sort of processing circuit. That can be anything from logic gates to adders to ALUs to shift registers. It doesn't matter. It processes it in some way. And so it's those four components that you can arrange in multiple combinations to create computer designs that do anything. And so that's kind of what I want to get you guys to a point, uh, what point I want to get you guys to is uh, where you you understand what the fundamental concepts of the computer is, and the how to build your own computer would basically show you how to envision your computer and translate that into a physical circuit. Now again, this would be primarily for people who are actually serious about learning how to build a computer and actually want some medium of experimentation, which is what I've been using it for. So I'm assuming when people are watching my videos that they're kind of following the same path that I'm in. And if that's what you're after, that, that's something I'm more than willing to, to help you out with. But if all you're doing is just watching my videos with the hopes that you'll be able to recreate Skittle bits, you, you're following the wrong channel. And um, I would highly recommend watching someone else is what it all boils down to. And again, if that's the way you learn, because, you know, I, obviously I'm generalizing here. Uh, maybe not everybody learns through experimentation. Maybe some people just genuinely learn through copying. If you genuinely learn through copying, my only advice to you is if you're serious, if you really want to know how to build computers and you think the only way you can learn is through copying, you can copy me. But don't copy me verbatim. Uh, instead, what I would recommend doing is try and figure out the concepts of it uh, and try and build, try and think not how would I build it, but how would you build it, right? So 
I'll give you an example. Uh, Blue Wave was actually my interpretation of how the 8085 worked. And so I looked at the 8085 and I said, this is what it does. How does it do it? I have no idea, but I think this is how it would do it. And I started to build circuits that emulated what I thought was going on inside the 8085. And so if you guys are looking at my videos going, well, I would like to build my own Deep Thought, but Nubasaurus isn't releasing any tutorials, I'm not going to release tutorials. If you really want to build a Deep Thought, understand how it works, and build it the way you think it would be built. Because honestly, that is a huge asset if you can be able to do that. It'll take you far further than any tutorial will ever take you, and honestly, it is just a tremendous skill to have to be able to think and figure things out in your own head and go, okay, how would I do this? Now, you can refine it later. That's If it doesn't work right, if it doesn't work as well, you can refine it. That's fine. Failure is not a failure. Failure is a, a learning experience. You learn what doesn't work, and you learn to avoid that in future. But if you're sitting here going, you know, I don't want to build it because I'm not sure if, if it'll work, build it anyway, because Odds are it's probably not going to work. In fact, if I were to go through my creative world right now, I can show you I've released maybe four or five computer models on YouTube. There's probably 10 or 12 that I haven't released because they suck. <laughs> they will fail. Computer models fail. It's just something you have to you have to learn to deal with. And that's another thing. I do eventually want to release a video on how to troubleshoot a computer, but that's going to rely on learning the concepts and it's also why I think learning the concepts will be extremely effective because it will enable you to learn other things that will be incredibly useful so and then the my last point that I want to make I guess is if you know I hear a lot of people say they don't want to build a computer because they're afraid it won't work here's my response to that what's to be afraid of what's gonna break if a redstone computer doesn't work it's gonna flicker on and off really fast. It's not like real electronics where if you break something it's gonna cost you five dollars, ten dollars, fifteen dollars in components. It's redstone. You can turn it off, you can reconfigure it, and you can turn it back on. It's it's not gonna break and like I said, you it's a learning experience if it doesn't work. You know, you can try and fix it, you can try and troubleshoot it, or you can just toss it aside and say, okay that doesn't work, I'm not gonna do that again. You know? You, but I would highly recommend doing it yourself. Don't do it like somebody else. Do it like you, because that'll be the ultimate way for you to learn what works and what doesn't work. So, again, I did, that was kind of an incoherent rambling. Hopefully I get the point across, but like I said, this was a thought that I had on my head for quite some time and something I wanted to get out. So, hopefully this wasn't too abrupt of a video, but I'm going to release it anyway.